thrilling audiences on Broadway at the Plymouth Theater has just received a Tony nomination for Best Actor in a Musical. Please welcome from Jekyll and Hyde, Robert Cuccioli. <laughs> This is the moment This is the day When I send all my doubts and demons On their way Every endeavor I have made ever Is coming into play Is here and now Today, this is the moment, this is the time when the momentum and the moment are in rhyme. Give me this moment, this precious chance. I'll gather up my Make some sense at last This is the moment When all I've done All of the dreaming, scheming and screaming Become one This is the day See it sparkle and shine really like to be so far ahead of your time even your kids think you're cool I don't care about those rules what it's really like to be an overnight success after only a lifetime of rehearsal <laughs> what it's really like to be such a trendsetter a bad hair day sets off a style revolution Insanity. Run. what it's really like to keep topping yourself keep it up you're gonna be all right hit the heights survive the lows you ain't seen nothing yet what it's really like to be creative bravo profiles now every weeknight at eight only on bravo After awakening from a dream in the late 1800s, Robert Louis Stevenson crafted the novel The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. During that same period, Sigmund Freud was dabbling in psychoanalysis and developing his own theories of the id, superego, and ego, a theorem that was to forever change our understanding of the human mind. 
Endless dalliances in cinema have made this story iconoclastic, to say the least. But not until Leslie Brickus's book and lyrics and Frank Wildhorn's music has the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde reached an immediacy which may call our own persona into question. Robert, do you think the psychology of Freud can be applied here to what Stevenson created and what we see in this musical? A whole notion of uncontrolled passion of the id, trying to be kept in check by the superego, which is the conscience, or the other side. I mean, the superego here could obviously be Dr. Dr. Jekyll, the id could be Mr. Hyde, right. and then there's this common ground, the ego, which is sort of the slave of whichever wins out. Yeah, well, everyone does have a dark side, and, and uh, left unchecked, you will turn into Hyde. I mean, because you have all these, the, the dark uh, qualities can just fly out there, and it's, uh, it's, the, um, it's you keeping it within check that, that uh, makes us all certain individuals, because some people keep more in check than others, and, and, uh, and vice versa. So, yeah, um, it's very much Freudian what, what's going on. The one question I think people most ask, what is it about the father? that drives your psyche? We played around with this a number of times in different productions of it. And uh, originally it was all, it was Jekyll that was, it, his driving force was, was just trying to do it for himself. Uh, almost like a, a godlike complex. That's not a very sympathetic quality. So uh, we found, we, we toyed around with having dad involved there and, uh, and doing it for him and trying to, to save him. Uh, not that I would necessarily use the chemicals on him, but it's a step to help cure him. So uh, it's a much more sympathetic um, uh, story. Lucy is able to look into the eyes of someone and know them. She's probably one of the great all-knowing characters in the show, isn't she? I love that you pick that up. That's something that I've really worked on in the show, the real connection between Bob and I, Bob who plays Jekyll Hyde. Um, I think immediately when she meets him at the Red Rat where she works, she recognizes the goodness in this man immediately. Um, and she's attracted to that, but doesn't, can't really quite figure out why. I mean, he just wants to be her friend as Dr. Jekyll. Just her friend, and a man has never, never treated her really that way in her life. Um, and then once again, in Dangerous Games in the second act, when he is Mr. Hyde, every time she looks in his eyes, I mean, the evil, the, the, the passion, the lust, um, is also very attractive to her. She's attracted to that also. Um, so she, yeah, I think she's uh, pretty smart in identifying and picking up different, the real core of the, of the character, both characters that Bob plays. She, of course, is in the lower end of life, the lower end of the spectrum, but she finds goodness through the other side of Jekyll and Hyde, and mm -hmm. therein she grows as a character, and we begin to wonder which side in her life stage is going to win out. Well, um, as you know, she's a, a lady of the evening, lady of the night, um, and there isn't really much background in the script about her specifically because she really doesn't have a family. There's So I had to create pretty much where she came from. I thought she might have been an orphan, come from a, an abusive background. Um, and she ends up being a prostitute. Um, but I think that there's a lot of goodness in her. And she picks that up immediately from Dr. Jekyll. Um, but she's also attracted to the Hyde aspect of him. Um, the darker, passionate side. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I think she yearns uh, for the goodness because she hasn't had much of that in her life. Um, but like I said, because of her background, I think uh, 
doing the kind of work that she does and probably the kind of background that she grew up in. The other side is also very attractive. I think she equates the love with the abusiveness, too. So I She dreams. She dreams of a time where if the, just even the possibility of meeting someone like a Dr. Jekyll and she were to get together, um, there is that possibility. So um, she, she's, she's a real dreamer, too. That's the thing I need to give me no heart. Have a chance in life to find a new heart. Just a simple When she does uh, end the show with a new life, she is determined to make a change in her life. Um, so I think the songs are very reflective of, of sort of the journey that she takes throughout the show. What becomes of Lucy? I mean, does she really die? I mean, there's some question there, because her leg is up when she's carried off. That's true. There's a reason for that. God, I didn't, I've never really thought about that. Does she really die? I think she does. I think she does. Um, I think towards the end, uh, she begins to, it's not really clear in the show, but I think she, when she's on the bed, I believe she starts to put together the Jekyll and the Hyde, that they possibly may be one. And I think uh, things start to fall apart for her at that moment. I really do. And um, again, it's, it's not really clear whether she dies or not, but I think she does. You have such a loyal cadre of fans that greet you every night outside the theater. When I was talking with uh, some of the other members of the cast, they told me that this is sort of a journey for you every night, and it's a journey for the audience. And when you come out, you want to share. Well, yeah, it's not only that, but, um, but uh, I think that these people have not only the ones that have come numerous times, but uh, there are those, there are many first timers that are out waiting because they have been affected by the show. And um, I know for myself, it takes me occasionally 20 minutes to a half hour to get out of, out of the theater. And they're still waiting. And that says a lot to me. And, uh, and I wanna give them back something. I feel that it's part of, it's part of the whole deal to, to greet them and and to speak with them a little bit. Some have questions about the show, and some have personal questions, and some just want an autograph or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think that they deserve my time. Most roles are life enhancing. This is life enhancing and life changing for you, isn't it? Yeah, luckily it hasn't been life threatening. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it has. Um, I've, I've been around uh, quite a while. I've been you know, kicking around New York doing odd, lots of shows off Broadway or regional or whatever. And um, I knew when this project came up that uh, it, was, it was for me, and it was mine, and I knew that it would, uh, it would change my life to some extent. And um, I did everything I could to get it, and when I got it, I did everything I could to, to make it really count, make it really worth something to me. And uh, I think I succeeded. Thank you for taking this psychological journey with me. From the darkest understanding of ourselves to the pristine light of day, these Broadway pieces have opened a whole new window. Now it's your job to find your way in. See you next time on National Arts.